In addition to building costumes in the costume shop, we often have to change the look of existing pieces. Sometimes a newly made garment needs to be aged, such as this petticoat. It was white and brand new when built, now it's much older. Other times a garment might have a story behind it, such as this uniform that now, sadly, looks like someone has been sleeping outside in it for years. One of the most common adjustments to a piece is color. We dye fabrics or finished garments in these two restaurant stock pots, which have their own heating units. We use RIT dye, and it's important to boil the color and dissolve it completely if you want something dyed evenly. The pots are filled by using a hose connected to faucets on the wall. The drain needs to be closed, and once the pot is full, it is turned on and set to the highest setting, which is 10. When experimenting with a color, it's better to use the stovetop and a small pot to figure out the proportions of dye. We rarely use a color without adding another color to it. Once you've dipped a swatch of a similar fabric and gotten the color you need, you can size up to the large dye pots using the same proportion of dye. This student wanted to keep her color irregular and spotty, so she didn't have the dye come to a full boil. Instead, she sprinkled it on top of the water and dipped through the floating colors. A swatch makes sure you have the concentration right before you dip the whole garment. The fabric should be wet before you dip it to make sure it dyes evenly. And you'll notice this blouse is on a hanger, which makes it easier to keep a straight line, since only the bottom half is being dipped. Some fabrics di take dye very quickly, and some have to be boiled for a longer time. This blouse has a lot of rayon, which dyes like a dream. To add to the irregular effect, dry dye was sprinkled on the hot, wet fabric, allowed to set for a bit, and then dipped again to merge it in. Once the color is attained, keeping in mind that it will dry lighter, the excess is squeezed out and the piece is taken to the sink for rinsing with cold water. It is rinsed until the rinse water runs as clear as possible. The top of the blouse will be a second color, so a second pot was set up. Keeping the already dyed section out of the pot, the top of the blouse was then dipped. Rinsing the second color is just as carefully done, so the colors don't mix and get muddy. Once the rinse water is mostly clear, the piece can be carefully put into the spin cycle of a washing machine to get most of the water out. The dye pot should be emptied, turned off, and cleaned when we're done. Everything needs to be ready for the next time. Other students in the class were using painting and bleaching techniques. Our fitting forms must be protected from either of these by being covered with plastic. We recycle dry cleaning bags for this purpose. And for working on pants, we use full body forms, which take a little more covering. We also use a fair amount of masking tape. This student was aging and distressing a pair of jeans. After making sure the fabric was damp and stretched onto the form, a grater was used to wear the fabric down. It's important to make wear in places that make sense. The space in a back pocket where a wallet might be carried, the edge of pockets, where hands rub past them frequently, knees and hems. After fraying the fabric, bleach or a bleach and water mix was brushed on to fade those areas. A hair dryer was used to speed the process along. For adding color, fabric paints are used. In the shop, we use jacquard fabric paints. For basic color mixing, the shades are teal, yellow, pink, plus black and white for shading and tinting. This
student worked on a t-shirt, shortening it and adding a decorative pattern. With the fabric damp, she used a sponge to sponge in a pattern. You can use a brush, a toothbrush to spatter, and a variety of colors gives you more flexibility while you're working. She used a grater at the bottom to give it a more worn look, make it a little less new. This student was working on more realistically aging and staining a t-shirt. When making realistic stains, consider where sweat collects in seams, on the back. It eventually discolors the fabric. Deodorant can also leave marks. And how about a nosebleed? Think where the character might lean up against a wall, brush up against things. Also, consider what their job might be. A baker would have different dirt on them than a mechanic. Here's how the class's finished projects turned out.